You talking to the Rolex wearing, diamond ring wearing, kiss stealing, willing dealing, limo jet flying. We Rick flaring on the flaring on the. We Rick flaring on the. You talking to the Rolex wearing, diamond ring wearing, kiss stealing, willing dealing, limo jet flying. Uh, we Rick flaring on the flaring on the. We Rick flaring on the flaring on. Uh, it's apparent these girls staring. I'm Rick flaring. Go to cross my chest. I'm fresh to death. I'm Paul Barry, not at all scary. When I open like that, it walks the fine to these circles that's going in like a carry shot. Woo! I'm going in like a merry pop off that merry crop in the top flow at the Marriott. So questioning me is like questioning you. See, we the best dressed, so come and get blessed with the crew. Not one but two. Different ways to slaughter your crew. Command and tat across the chest. I guess she blessed with the truth. People want to see them checks, representation of proof. Living through my elders, trying to resonate to the youth. But ain't nothing to get my flash on. Legevity is heavily embedded in my melanin. Layman terms, I last long. My ground repetitive, I'm smoother than real silk. Lyrical cash cow, who can't cry over spilled milk. We in here. You talking to the Rolex wearing, diamond ring wearing, kiss stealing, willing dealing, limo jet flying. This preparation with greatness In the street full of fakeness It's really up for the taking See life is what happened to you More so how you take it Don't get stripped of your knowledge And mentally leave you naked I like to live otherwise I'm sorry that I'm fresh to death I put the polo and apologize See black sun We ain't nothing like the mother guys Quit to socialize You organize Then we mobilize off the deep end like a scuba diver And no confusion, just keep it pushing like Uber drivers Woo! Business fresh, just like a supervisor In a Gucci visor, can't find a smoother rhymer You talking to the Rolex wearing Diamond ring wearing Kiss stealing, willing dealing, limo jet flying We Rick flaring on the flaring on We Rick flaring on the You talking to the Rolex wearing Diamond ring wearing Kiss stealing, willing dealing, limo Tell me what is we doing, get into it, okay, look, I'ma say this and keep it moving. My boy Scotty, man, he off of the leash, black grab, paying college, I'm glad that he called me. Walk it, cause we all been taught that talk is cheap, even primetime knows, got for the HBCU streets. What is going on, everybody? You already know what it is. Happy Thursday. You're, man, we in here. Let me just tell you. Okay, last night, okay, last night, couldn't even get an answer. Mm. Hey, I tried to call, tried to call, but the power won't let me down. Hey, I was lit. I was lit. I wish it was, I w listen, I don't even know where I, I, I feel like we all made it. You know what I'm saying? Like, dirty ENT, we all we got. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was so happy. So, <laughs> 
Because I was ready, okay? Let me tell you what I was ready to do. I, I was ready. I was ready to come on here and give you the rant of the century. I, I felt all this in my shanana. I felt all of this in my shanana. I was ready to come on here and give you the biggest rant of I'm never picking an HBCU against any white team. I don't give a damn if it's NAIA, D3, D2. I'm not picking no more HB. You keep letting me down. You keep failing me. But oh, but oh, there's a ram in the bush. Come on. No, 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 no. I, I, I said it a little loud. I said there's a ram in the bush. You, you, say what? I thought you knew. See, it's not Howard. No. No, it, it, it couldn't be Howard. You know what I'm saying? It couldn't be, it's not Texas Southern. I talked to a Graham alumni. I said, you know, it's one thing that's real funny to me about Gramlin. Gramlin, when they do something, they now become the standard, right? They now, because think about it. Think of, It's always Gramlin leading the charge. Celebration Bowl. They were the only ones to win it. Super Bowl MVP, Doug Williams. Now they said, we are first time go, and we're going to first time win. <laughs> Texas Southern have been 36 times. They can't get a duck. <laughs> Our corn been to 32 NITs. They can't. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, sometimes you don't get a second chance, okay? Sometimes you do not get a second chance. Sometimes that baddie, okay, sometimes that baddie you got, you only get one chance to shoot your shot, okay? You only get one chance, and you don't want to screw it up. You might not get back here, but you know what Gramlin said? Hey, we gonna make this a first time go. <laughs> we talk about. Listen, if they had to the listen, you know I call them a little handicap man. You know I called him a little handicap man. If they had that little handicap drum last night in that Dayton, Ohio, oh, it would have been rocking. Man, I love it. I absolutely love it. This is what this is what it's all about, okay? This is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. See, you didn't have the play in though, sir. You, you didn't have the play in, sir. That's not you, you're not you're not understanding it. You're not understanding it. Now that the tournament has been broadened and they make 16 seeds have to play in. See, Jackson State got into the tournament because they won the conference. That's not the same. It's not the same. Right? So you have to play in to get into the tournament. See? That's Pajo State fans trying to emplace themselves. That is Pajo State fans trying to insert themselves. Let's not do this. Let's not do this. Okay? Let's not do this. Let's not do this. Okay? Let's not do this. But, anywho, I'm excited. I'm, I'm super excited. So, I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. Out, oh, man, that game was so exciting last night. Let's get into that game. But before we do, listen, last chance to get into the bracket. Giving out a hundred dollars. I talked to the wife. The wife said we good on the three digit numbers, right? Okay, if you're looking to get into the off script bracket tournament, the link oh, the link is not in the description below. I will give you the link. Uh, let me see. Let me get to my group real quick. I will put it in the chat. 
All right. And you guys, if you would like to join, if you would like to join, you are more than welcome to do so. This is the password, $100 giveaway for the winner of the off-script bracket challenge. The game starts at 12, so you better get your ass up in there. All right, you can absolutely match. Reese, always, my boy, you can always match that 100, all right? You can always match it. So we will be giving out, I'll be giving out 100. Reese will be giving you another 100. So that's a $200 bracket challenge. For the free ski. For the free ski, just to be, a, just to participate. Ain't you ain't got to put in to get in. Next year you have to put in to get in. You know what I'm saying? But this year, first time doing it for the free ski. Just come on in there, have fun, talk a little trash. All right, and we'll do what we do. All right. Also, make sure this video, this this video is sponsored by Elite 15 Coffee. Make sure you start your day in an elite way with Elite 15 Coffee. Black-owned, veteran-owned business, only way to do it, only way to strive for it. Link is in the description below. Get yourself today some Elite 15 coffee, all right? Let's get it. And also, last but not least, listen, on the road to 300! 300 members, we on the road uh, in July. Will we be giving a giveaway for... Uh, NCAA for members only, okay? It's the men's bracket, not a woman's bracket. It's the men's bracket. Um, we will be giving away, I mean, we'll be giving away NCAA, all right, for in the month of July for members only, all right? Reese has, has a pre-order copy of NCAA. We will be giving that away to members only in the month of July for off-script membership. We're trying to get to 300 by the month of July, all right? It is what it is. Now, let's talk about the game. Let's talk about the game. I hope that score is correct. I was rushing. I'm sorry, guys. Let me just double check, make sure that was the right score. Because I don't want to be giving you up. That was the wrong score. You know, I'll be, I'll be doing typos and stuff. Let me see. Montana State. Is that the right score? I think that's the right score. I think that's the right score. So, anyway, if it ain't, they won. I don't give a damn. As long as the score says Grambling won, that's all that matters. 81 to 88, okay? 81 to 88, what a magnificent game. Down 14 going into the second half of this game. Listen, it was really, it was really Ford against Kofer. That game was Ford against Kofer, and the kid, Kofer went for 19 in the second half. He had zero points in the first half and went for 19 in the second half. Robert Ford was, I mean, Robert Ford looked like the one black kid on the all-white team, okay? <laughs> Can I say that? Robert Ford looked like the stereotypical, you got a black kid on the all-white team, and I'm going to hold it down, okay? I'm going to show you why I'm the one black kid on this all-white team. That boy was tremendous. I was like, this dude won't let it go. Like, it's like it's like the movies where the dude be, like, like the dude be fighting, right? And, like, every time you knock him down, he somehow get up. And you're like, damn, man, just stay down. Just stay down every single time. Gramlin went on a run. Here come Robert Ford with the ha, squat, ha, ha, ha. Oh, get off me, ha, squat. I'm like, got though my gots to be more careful. <laughs> gots to be more careful. But once again, Gramlin pulls it out. And this is, I, I, I said this on Twitter, but I want to say it to y'all. What was so tremendous about this game? You. I don't listen. Jamel Kofer gets all kudos, right? Jamel Kofer gets all the kudos. The players get all the kudos. But this has to go to Coach Dante Jackson. I you got listen. I know I talk about coaches on here at nauseum, right? How bad they are. They don't. the way that Coach Jackson ran with his because remember this was not Contavious. 
Moten and Dozier were on the bench. Let me say that again. When they went on the run to squeeze the game, to make the game competitive, Dozier and Moten were on the bench, and he kept them on the the bitch, he did not force them into the game. He didn't like, oh, I got to get my stars in. He didn't, in the biggest moment, coaches freeze up like that. Coaches would be like, oh, I need my stars. I don't want, you know, it's a transfer portal. I don't want my stars to feel like I don't care about. It. It's a like Coach Jackson said, F all of that. I'm going with the guys that got me here in this particular moment right here. And he left those guys in and they made a hell of a run. A hell of a run. And you got to give Coach Jackson all kudos for his resiliency and resolve to stick with his second unit for as long as he did. It was, I, I'm telling you, Moten didn't come back into the game until like four minutes in the second half. Maybe three. It was literally Kofer, the other kid with the dreads. Uh, the big, the big bigs in the middle. I think twenty ten. Jalen Johnson came back in, stuff like that. But the guards that you, what you know, and that the they have the name. They're all swag players. They were on the bench, and he just let them roll. And you got to give credit to Coach Jackson for that. And let's talk about the performances of both of these players. I, I mean, listen, it felt like Kofer could do nothing wrong like when you talk about a player being in the zone like where they felt like um they felt like anything could go in right like any anything burnett oh yeah burn i like burnett number four i think that's his name burnett i like number i like burnett number four uh anything that could go in was going in i'm talking about fadeaways layups free throws he had it all going in the second half such a huge run such a and and let's and let's be also it wasn't just the points it was the defense on the other end it was the steals it was the ball pressure it was listen it the one thing i loved about this game is that the one thing i love about this, the the one thing i loved about this game was the intensity that they played on the defensive side of the ball when they were making their run, right? It was the it was the steals. It was because really, if you really watch the game, Montana State, all they could really do was shoot, right? You had Robert who could Robert could slash, but he was in foul trouble early in the second half. So he had to sit down for a lot of that. Once Robert went, once Ford sat down, Gramlin just pressed the shooters and made sure that they couldn't get loose. As long as they couldn't get no shots off. They weren't going to draw past them and kill them. They weren't worried about that. So they extended that defense. They put pressure on them. Uh, the big boy number two from uh, from Montana State kind of went cold late in the half. It, and, it, and it just in it in the way that basketball is the ebbs and flows of basketball, and it's a game of streaks. That once Grambling got hot and got the confidence, it was just a wrap from there. So it was just a man. Listen, it was an exciting. I watched every. I didn't turn when they were down by eleven at half. I did not turn. I I watched all the halftime. I ain't get mad and turn the TV off. I watched every minute of this game from the tip off to the ending of it. I watched every single minute of it, and it was a damn good game. And the way that the resolve and the way these kids played was everything, was absolutely everything. And they, and the way they represented for HBCUs, especially for Gramlin, was absolutely tremendous. And once again, and you've seen, and you've seen Mr. Campbell say this over and over and over about um, why the why HBCs would never leave the NCAA is because of the basketball money. And front office sports put this out and said on Sunday, Grambling State was named his first ever NCAA tournament appearance tonight. Grambling State won his first ever NCAA t a tournament appearance. Now, over the next several years, the SWAC will receive a payout of about two million for the Tigers' first four victory. So once again, just the win, just that win in 
the NCAA tournament has the financial value of pretty much the whole ESPN contract for the SWAT. One win. One play-in tournament win. And, 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 and honestly, you know, if it ends tomorrow, it could be one magical run of a play-in game, right? So if if it ends tomorrow, it is what it is, but it's just the the financial impact of winning said tournament and winning one game and getting into the tournament, right? So absolutely amazing uh, for for what Gremlin has done and accomplished and things like that. So can I get another? Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. All right. Absolutely amazing. Shout out to Coach Jackson. Shout out to those guys and things like that. I'm going to open the call lines up if anybody want to call in. Talk about the game. Talk about the excitement. Uh, we can do that. 518-263-8124. You are the only participant in the conference. 8 one all participants are muted. Shout out to you, Mr. Hill, for the for the Graham. You know I had to represent today. And listen, for all you Graham faithful, doesn't matter how bad y'all are in football this year. Or if you are, I won't even bring the trash bag up. I won't even do y'all like that. I won't even do y'all like that. Won't even do y'all like that. Okay? Mm -mm. Won't do y'all like that. I'm going I'm to let y'all ride for the year. The whole year, I ain't even gonna, I ain't even gonna think about putting the jazz back up. So y'all, y'all good with me, okay? Y'all good with me, uh, Reese? If I'm, if I'm being honest, man, I really didn't care about that game. I mean, we talked about it on outspoken, but I didn't, I ain't, you know, I ain't watch that. I ain't watch that. You know what I'm saying? So, what about it? They lost. Trash. Bridge is coming to you. Well, we done went to the whitest caucus amount to the blackest of sand. Let's go. Praise the Lord. They finally did it. But Scotty, for real, man, that was a good game, bro. Just all around. Like how you just broke down the game. Like, be honest with you, Scotty, like, that's some, that is some NBA type coaching. Cause you only see that in NBA where they leave their starters on the bench and put their bench in the game and leave them in. You never see that on a college level like that at all. So, like, just praises to the coach for trusting in the bench player and the role player playing their role because they didn't do nothing unordinary. They did their job, and that's what you're supposed to do when you play games like that. Like you said, for Jackson State, do your job. Don't go out here shooting unnecessary shots that you ain't supposed to be doing. Do your job and dance the country. No, you know, I'll say this, right? I'll say this. Uh I get what you're saying, but that's what you have a bench for, right? The I'll say this. The thing that you 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 have a hard time, coaches always like to go down with their guys, right? So you want to go down with your stars because you you know your stars give you the best chance to win. Why? Because they stars. You get what I'm saying? But at the yeah. same time, I think that um the way coach how long Coach Jackson left them in and as the as the lead started to, you know, as the lead started to come down and still roll with them when it was bucket for bucket, bucket for bucket, and didn't toss in Dozier and didn't toss in Moten until four to three minutes into the second half. To, to me, that's where it got to where I trust my backups, right? Like when it gets close, then you, you, you'll you see the times where they call timeout, bring the stars back in, okay, close the game out for us, right? He didn't even do that. He really let them go. He let Colfer, uh go bucket for bucket. He let Burnett and those boys go bucket for bucket with Montana State until about three minutes, two minutes left where he knew the pressure was going to ratchet up. He threw Moten back in there. He threw Dozier back in there. I was like, all right, still left Colfer in there and was like, all right, bring it home, right? So – I just think that right. in this situation, it was just a it was a great situation for them. And the thing that benefited Gremlin the most is Montana never went zone. If it was, if it's one thing that I would 
If it was one thing that I would have to blame that Montana State coach for, and I'm ha I'm happy he didn't. He didn't go zone. I would have went two three zone, and they would have never got another drive. They would have had to shoot that ball until they beat me, and they had to show me that they could shoot me out my zone because I'm not letting you get. It was man on man, and none of them white boys could guard those guards. It just it wasn't fair. It really just wasn't fair. So the 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 problem with the Montana State coach is he never went zone. He should have went two, three, and made Gramlin shoot the ball to win the game. Period. Heck yeah, heck yeah, man! But too bad, so sad. Gramlin in that thing, and they do it. <laughs> hey, appreciate you, Bridges. Appreciate the call, man. He said, "Too bad, so sad." You know what I'm saying? So if if you're talking, if we're talking basketball, right? Like just straight basketball, Montana State should have went zone at like the six minute mark and just rolled it out. Right, because at the end of the day, they Gramlin could not shoot. They could like every think about it. Every bucket that they scored, they may they might have made two threes in that whole run. It was all going to the basket, diving to the basket, one on one inside. Kofer with the turnaround fadeaways in the mid range. Like it was nothing. It was nothing in the perimeter. So I'm gonna make you play from the perimeter. So that that was just a bad adjustment on the coach's part that he didn't make, which I don't give two shits about because he didn't now. Uh, uh, Perry wanted to talk a little Howard and Wagner. Let's talk a little Howard and Wagner, right? Shout out to my guy, OH. He's in the chat. I'm about to bring up his, uh, his message that he put because he told me from jump. He told me from jump. Got to give him kudos. He said, Scotty, he said, I got Wagner over Howard, little bro finna cook them, Melvin Council Jr. And listen, hey, listen, that boy a pro, okay? I'm sorry, like, that kid is a pro. Melvin Council Jr. is a pro. He is nasty with it, okay? Absolutely nasty with it. I'll be surprised if he stays at Wagner another year and does not hit the transfer portal and is not at a power five program because his game is like that, right? Like they had nobody could guard Mer Melvin on Howard. Nobody. One, and I love, let me say this. And if you know basketball, I love, I loved how uh, Wagner intentionally spread at the floor for Melvin to do work, right? So they would literally go five out and just literally let Melvin go one-on-one -on -one with his matchup, and you can't guard him. He's too tall for you to block his shot. He's too quick for you to stay with him, and he's long, right? His arms are long. So, it, man, the kid was just – kid's just amazing, right? Kid was just absolutely amazing. And let me say this to Howard. For, like – what is it, 20 minutes and a half, 20, 20? I'll say so it's 40 minutes. I would say for like 35 minutes of that freaking game, Howard just didn't want to come play. I felt like for 35 minutes for the Howard versus Wagner game, 35 minutes of that game, Howard didn't know how to play. You're like, what are you doing? Like it just it looked so discombobulated. It it didn't look nothing looked like they understood what they wanted to do. A lot of dribbling. Uh, Seth Towns was pretty much they saving grace for most of the game. Hairston really wasn't doing nothing. And then you get three looks for, to win the game and you still lose. It's just a tough loss. It's a tough loss for Howard. Real tough loss because they didn't wake up until like the last five minutes of the game. And then all of a sudden they became Howard. But it is what it is. All right. Next matchup for Gramlin, Purdue and Zach Eady. Now. I talked to I talked to Mr. Hill last night with his cousin. And listen, man, I haven't watched much Purdue Purdue basketball. I haven't. I ain't gonna lie to you. But I believe in Grambling. <laughs> now I didn't pick him in my bracket though, so I don't believe him that much, okay? I, you know, there there is common sense going around here. So I didn't I didn't pick him that much. I didn't listen. I believe in him. I don't believe him that much, right? So I I didn't pick him in my bracket. I ain't gonna hold you because you know it's only you. You don't want to mess up your bracket early. It didn't just you know what I'm saying. So 
Uh, what do you think of the matchup if Gramlin played Wagner? Um, uh, I feel like they're I feel like they're they're pretty much the same team, right? I I I, I don't think there's anybody on Gramlin that can guard Melvin Council. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, I don't think anybody can guard Melvin Council one on one. But I think they're pretty much the same team. A lot of slashing, a lot of uh, dribbling. But I think they shoot better. I think they I think they have better shooters than Wagner. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Wagner pulled that out um, just because I think they have better shooting. All right. I think because they got better shooting. But uh, yeah, man. So Zach Eady, listen, man, it, it's going to be. Listen, I, I'll tell if I got 14 players, I'm going to tell 12 of them jokers. Hey. Seven of y'all going to be useful fouls. <laughs> if I got 12 players, I'm going to tell seven of them, y'all going to be used for fouls. All right? Now, y'all going to be used for fouls. Because you, you got you to gotta keep Zach Eady. Now, listen, you can let Zach Eady go off, right? You can let him go for 40. You can let him go for 50, but you can't let nobody else go off. OK, you cannot let nobody else go off. So you got to keep everybody else manageable. Right. You got to keep everybody else manageable in, in that in that you can't. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't let the game get away from you, but you just can't. If you let Zach Eady go off. OK, oh, he's Zach Eady, seven, four, 300 pounds, whatever. Whoop you do. Got to let him do what he do. He, I mean, so, certain things you just can't stop. Right. But you just can't let everybody else go off. In response to that, right? You gotta make everybody else work for what they have. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be, a, man, it's gonna be a game. It's gonna be a fight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go watch some Purdue basketball. Um, because once again, that was the first Grambling game I've watched all season. Right? I t- I don't watch men's basketball like that. So that was the first Grambling. I like, I ain't never seen Grambling play. That was my first time watching them play. So kind of understanding what they do. Now I gotta go watch Purdue, see what they do, see how it matches up. I'll probably give you a video later tonight after all the tournament games or uh, the, the games go on to like eight o'clock at night. So I'm gonna probably just give you a short little video of, of a short little breakdown of the Purdue and Grambling game just to kind of see where that goes from there. But you know what I'm saying? But it's it stopped Zach Eady in 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 number one, number two, and number three. That those are the bullet points. Stop Zach Eady. It's going to be a game for about the first three minutes before you see Purdue pull off on them. Uh, you know it's possible. Listen, man, if UMBC. UNBC beat Virginia that one year. 16 seed took down that number one seed. So anything, anything possible. It's called March Madness for a reason. Anything is possible. Oh, the phone isn't that the same number one who lost it. That is the same number one. That is the same number one seed. All right. That is exactly the same number one seed. Okay. So just want to give you that. Hey, listen, man. We're going to continue on with the show. Call lines are open, 518-263-8124, 518-263-8124, if you'd like to talk about it. Let me just explain something to y'all. I keep I, I keep uh, trying to tell y'all that PWIs are different, okay? I, I come on here and I say, hey, everybody, look, Scotty, you're so hard on our people, and you're so mean, and you're so this, and you're so that, and you need to be better at it, and you need to speak highly of our black people. Listen, bro. I keep trying to tell y'all, if you can't deal with me, if any coach in this space cannot deal with me, do not expect them to ever be a PWI head coach. Don't, they will never, Fred McNair, never, because he stopped his radio show because he didn't like people telling him that he, he needed to get rid of his office of coordinator, right? Who else? Dooley. And all the stuff that he went through. Who else? All right. Connell Minor. Like, all them Bamas cannot be no, they could never be a PWI coach because PWIs and the way they talk about their athletics is completely different. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you an example. I'm gonna give you an example. Now, mind you, now mind you, this is the team that just won the Big Sky Classic. Okay, this ain't no oh great season, Montana State. Oh, oh, we love to see you next season. The white people are like, you suck. 
Second half, shit the bed. And then shit the bed in OT. On OT. You deserve to go home. See, I, I'm, I'm trying to tell y'all something. Y'all going to listen to me when I tell you. You going to listen to me when I try to tell you PWIs move different. Okay? Y'all be out here talking about some. We need to speak. Them, them bamas be like, no, you suck. Nice choke, fellas. That's what happened when you don't take care of the ball. Here's some more for you, right? Losing by seven in overtime is a special kind of stupid. The HBCU schools are the worst conference in college sports, too, losers. I'm telling you. You fucking bums. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, boy. And this is, listen, you know where I found this? You know where I found this stuff? Underneath the Montana State official Twitter. I'm going to say that again. I got all these comments from the Montana State basketball official Twitter account. They posted the loss, and all these comments are underneath the official Montana State basketball Twitter account. OK, these white people don't care. They don't care. They didn't do this on their own personal jank. I didn't find all these white bamas and no, they took their happy ass right underneath of the official Montana State Twitter account and posted all this. You guys are fucking pathetic. What a fucking joke, you fucking losers. <laughs> Y'all fucking suck, bums. Suck my... <laughs> oh, man. I'm trying... Listen, man. So when y'all... When you... When y'all Negroes be out here talking about some... Man, Scotty, you got to start talking better about our people. I'm telling you, man. It's different in the PWI world. It is different. There is no holds bar. There is no, these are our kids. There is none of that. And they, they, and they white. They ain't white looking out for other white people. These are white coaches. These are white people talking about white coaches. So it's not no, oh, he's my white brother. You know what I'm saying? He my white cracker. Ain't none of that. We mayo together. Ain't none of that. None of it. So I just, I just need you. I, when I tell y'all, when I try to tell y'all, athletics is different. You know what I'm saying? It's just different, right? Like you got to take the criticism that comes with the job that you hold. I'm not, am I, am I saying this is right? No, I'm not saying this is right. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying it's right, but I'm just telling you this is sports. This is how it goes down. These are how people take take their sport seriously, not seriously, whatever. So when there are other, when you have black people who understand the dichotomy of sports and that it's not a, oh, let's pacify the kids. Yeah, you can pacify the kids, you know, when they're at school and when they're on campus and when they're in your classroom, and when you're talking to them one on one as a teacher, or as a as a as an alum and all that, that's all good and dandy. But when it comes down to sports and wins and losses, you better take this criticism as it comes because that's the name of the game, especially these, especially these black coaches. Why do these black coaches think they deserve some, some kind of pat on the back? You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't, it ain't, that ain't how it go. Just because you're a black head coach, oh, you know, we got we to we pat our black head coaches on the back. No, you suck. You suck, ninja. Negro. So, nah, Reese coming to you. What's good? What's good, Reese? Hey, man, I see you on that because that's how I'm going to be with Mailer this year in the fall. Let him lose a, let him lose a game, and I'm at that game. He's going to hear my voice. I'm like, you fucking suck. You need to leave. Bye. <laughs> on to the next. But people scared to have criticism against their coaches. Like, I have allegiance to them. No. We'll go to the next coach. 
I mean, first of all, y'all don't really care about sports like that. Let's be honest. I can't say boo the ways of the fan base. I can't do it by myself. It's going to take some time, but I care. <laughs> I feel like that. Me, I care. <laughs> you know you know what's funny, Reese? You, you, you just led to my next segment. I, I, I love that you called in. My, my boy Malcolm, you know, from Maryland, DM, DMV, you're good with me. He says this to your Alabama State alum. Uh, uh, what is her name? The one off of the hill. Jen. Jen. Yeah, he said it's the Jen. Jen said, we don't lose against your strongest MEAC teams. We were we would find against check notes, the four six Bears of Montana State. This, listen, Banks said the realest thing I've ever heard on Twitter. I was like, damn, this is so true. He said, with all due respect. Until Connell Maynard became y'all coach, I didn't even know y'all existed. Real talk to me, when it comes to seriousness in football, y'all are probably the fourth of four HBCUs in y'all state. So he said it goes Alabama State, Tuskegee, Miles, then Alabama A&M. <laughs> hey, that's his opinion. I hey. I mean, it's kind of true, though. I ain't going to lie to you. Because before Maynard, ain't them 4-8, and 4-8, 3-7. Eight, and, eight, three and seven. Just, just losing after losing. Then Maynard came. He did his little touch. But he lost his touch. And now he needs to go. Honestly. <laughs> I, I've been on that bandwagon and fired his ass. And when he started losing again, I'm going to be screaming, fire his ass. And I'm going to start making signs and say, fire Coach Maynard at every game. Mm. Well, what if he? You can't wait. If he winning, you can't put that up. You know what I'm saying? I just yeah. Oh, bullshit! <laughs> <Fire his ass. laughs> oh, shit. No, honestly, man, I hope we do good in football. But if we can't beat FAMU and Jackson State, get his ass out. I don't care. I don't care if we win classic. I don't care if we win homecoming. Beat FAMU and Jackson. All right, we'll see. I don't think it's gonna happen though. But you know, it is what it is. Yeah, we'll see. But appreciate it, man. No, I appreciate you, Reese. Man, listen, you couldn't ask for a better transition. You couldn't ask for shut up. listen, first of all, Banks is out here on Twitter fighting these streets. Okay. He out here, he was out here last night with Howard going like toe to toe. Like I mean like slug fest over to it. I was like, damn, it was just HBCU. You it was all good just two hours ago. It was all for one and one for all, go Grambling, and then an hour later, it's, it's Banks and Sean on Twitter, Howard versus Morgan, the school in D.C. as Banks calls them, they just going toe-to-toe, slugfest, haymaker, ha, ha, ha. I was like, God, no. But anyway, when he posted this, I said, I said, damn, that's about as real as it can get. If you an Alabama a and fan, this, listen, you got it. Oh, God damn. I mean, he ain't lying. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he ain't lying. But you're the fourth out of four HBCUs in your state? I'm just saying. I, I think there's some truth to that. That's all I'm going to say on that one. I think that, I think there's some truth to that. So it it is what it is. And listen, at the end of the day, man, Alabama a is going to be Alabama a Okay? Like, Alabama a and the the friend or the cousin, you know what I'm saying, that you be like, hey, you want to toss the football around? And they're like, uh, uh, no, I have algebra. You know, like... <laughs> oh, Oh my god. <laughs> that is Alabama A and M in a very in a very short, concise statement. That's that's Alabama A and M. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Alabama State get together, Miles get together, Tuskegee get together, they start tossing the football around and like, A and M, you wanna come join us? Oh, no. <laughs> I got half have history. That's just <laughs> Oh, the blank man. <laughs> J5. 
Oh god, J5! <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. That's funny. That is funny. I'm done with y'all. We're gonna go. All right, I'm not going to hold y'all. You know, the NCAA tournament started right about now, probably about in seven minutes. So, listen, I know you members at work. Everybody got their CBS apps up. Okay, make sure you are tuned in all day today. It's going to be a it's going to be a hell of a day. All right, March Madness in full effect, man. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Make sure you guys, if you haven't got in your brackets yet, make sure you uh, get your brackets in. Make sure you support Elite 15 Coffee. Black on veteran business. Make sure you get yourself some Elite 15 Coffee. Link in the description below. Also, make sure. Thank you, Reese. Thank you, Reese. Make sure you sign up for your March Madness bracket. All right, hundred dollar giveaway. The password's right there. Link in the description. Reese has just posted it in the uh, chat. Make sure you get in. Uh, get your bracket in before the time is up. And last but not least, don't forget to become a member of the Offshore Channel. Got some big announcements coming down the pipe real soon. I will be making that announcement to the, my members when it gets solidified, okay? When it gets solidified. So listen, guys, I appreciate y'all listening. Until next time, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to holler. God bless. Yeah.